previously on TV Sins. I just want to let you know that in honor of the big homecoming game tomorrow, I'm going to give you guys the day off. I'm going to cut you a break today. So why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? Excuse me, could you spare some change for a phone call? What the hell are they talking about here? Why is camera? So I started hanging out with Rayanne Graff. Even in the 90s, teen shows were required to start off with narration. I swear, if TV existed in the colonial times, some show about George Washington's adolescence would have started with Mine dad hath granted me a hatchet, and you cherry tree totally look ripe to strike. Like with boys, how they have it so easy. How you have to pretend you don't notice them noticing you. Sure, 90210 may have pioneered the 30-something playing a high schooler move, but less than two minutes in, my so-called life says, you know what? Our shit's gonna be 40, motherfuckers. Because she wasn't just talking about my hair. She was talking about my life. Roll partial commercials. I had my hair dyed. My hair dyed of natural causes. Mom jokes. Considering the show had to actually pay someone to create the generic paper towels logo, wouldn't it be more beneficial to have someone like Bounty sponsor the show? Or just have the paper towels out of the packaging? Good cheese. Yes, in the 90s, we just tore open blocks of cheese and ate them with our bare hands because we were filthy animals, just begging for a bout with constipation. I cannot bring myself to eat a well-balanced meal in front of my mother. It just means too much to her. Jeez, talk about first world problems. It's not red. Crimson Glow. And it looks amazing! Seriously, if the show really wanted to make this kind of parental reaction believable, they could have at least had her dye her hair blue, purple, or given her a heroin addiction. I'm starting to like Anne Frank. Huh? Is she a sophomore too? Listen, dads can be clueless sometimes, especially when dealing with a teenage daughter, but there's a difference between clueless and so brain dead you mistake Anne Frank for a friend your child met at school. The sad truth is, my breasts have come between us. Let's try to contextualize this and assume that people were more honest and forthcoming a couple decades ago. That they had more hang-ups, or at least acknowledged them more. Or that they were more keenly subversive to the mechanisms of awkwardness. There is still no end to how casually skeevy this sequence is. Tell her not to walk around in a towel, okay? You can tell No, her. I can't. Was the dad's inability to deal with his daughters growing up and wearing a towel around the house the real stuff we needed on television dramas in 1994? Starting to see why this show only lasted 19 episodes. Chelsea Clinton, will you look at this? No freedom, no privacy, constant surveillance. That's what we need. Well, just wait 20 years. Apparently we can all blame the Chase family for the fact that our privacy is now a thing of the past. It could be a lot worse. Sure, you could be Ivanka. I mean, she could be cutting class, doing drugs, having sex. Like we did. If Tom Irwin is trying to get an award for creepiest dad from 90s television, he's succeeding with flying colors. I'm in love. His name is Jordan Catalano. Yep, this boy is terrifically good looking. You can see great things in this dude's future. Like, he'll totally form a band that'll feature songs like, you know, I guess the one about America and sh**. And oh, he'll be in really cool movies, like the one about the Brad Pitt and the replicants and sh**. Let's just all agree that Jared Leto peaked right here and move on. So you want to have sex with who? Who? Yeah, who? I know we're three years away from Chasing Amy coming out, but people still did know what the pronoun game was, right? I just like how he's always leaning against stuff. As she should. Jared Leto probably spent hours observing people lean to get it just right. F***ing method actors. I can't believe you did that to your hair without telling me. Can we talk about how you can't tell any of these girls apart, aside from Angela, without seeming 90s-ist? Look, people, if we can't get through this, the yearbook won't have a theme. God damn, talk about empty threats. Isn't this on the front end of the semester? Does the yearbook theme have to be set right the f now? My parents keep asking how school was. It's like saying, how is that drive-by shooting? So much angst and hyperbole. Also, to get this shot, someone had to be way too close to Claire's Danes than is legal. Heavily discounted, 10 things I hate about you's Heath Ledger. And she was never seen again. Look, you're the one that used a standard serial killer echoey sound, freeze frame, fade out, so don't blame me, show. You could have told me you were quitting. What? What are you quitting? Damn, this show is awash with the pronoun game. We're gonna be late. I thought you liked yearbook. How does Jaws 3D's Bess Armstrong know that Angela was quitting yearbook? She didn't even give her a chance to answer the question. Meanwhile, this is Amy. Amy forgot to bring it on at the big game last night. Amy is now sad. What is the purpose of plasma? Sure, teaching high school is rough, but if you're lecturing while a student is sleeping literally right under your nose and you don't even mention it, you've lost. Just go home already. Why do we need plasma, Brian? Because the League of Nations failed. And why did the League of Nations fail? 
Ooh, pick me, pick me! Uh, because they tried to do cutesy edits where it switches classroom mid-sentence and ended up being more confusing than clever. How would you describe Anne Frank? Lucky. Is that supposed to be funny, Angela? These types of cringy encounters eerily predict my Twitter timeline. Because if you made a book of what really happened, it'd be a really upsetting book. Like the Da Vinci Code. Man, this TV show is way too okay with these Anne Frank parallels to high school life. And despite nostalgia, TV show is wrong as hell. The lack of meat is destroying America. Vegan shaming. What is this? A Hyundai Super Bowl commercial? Holy sh! that's the band Animal Bag. Remember them? Of course you don't. And yeah, we're playing the music even though we're risking a claim. But if we get one, we're getting one from f***ing Animal Bag. This would be their greatest moment since this episode. Also, a live band? Spotlights? On a school night? This is in LA or New York City. This is a suburb in Pennsylvania. Who are these kids? Little known fact, teenagers in the 90s started wearing plaid at such a rate that this show was often cited as being solely responsible for the plaid famine of 1997. Dozens died from the inability to maintain the simple necessities of color cross pattern garments. And yet the producers walk free to this day. Jordan, this bites. Let's go over to Grungus, come on. This bites? This bites? You come back in here and wash your mouth out with an animal bag cassette tape, young man. I fell in some mud. I'm all right. So 20 years ago, when dialogue and music like this would play in shows, we all just kind of thought it was fine and stuff, because I kind of feel like I'm watching a telenovela on Telemundo right now. Student gets served gross shit at lunchtime cliche. What's up with that, by the way? There were beautiful garlic knots or baked potatoes or something that looked much better a second ago. That is an insane amount of jello. Like, the school has just given up and realized everyone will be high by lunch. Cafeteria is the embarrassment capital of the world. Apparently someone's never been to Middle Fart, Denmark. School flossing. I want to speak to you. I never no, want- forget it! You may think I'm going to sin this moment for the creation of the Claire Danes cry face, but nope, I'm going to take a sin off for how awesomely and disgustingly right this show gets high school, especially the relationships. So there. I'm not cry, you're cry. I'm not going to be sexist enough to suggest that the girls' bathrooms can't be just as nasty as the boys, but I do have to ask the question, is there not a trash can even in here? Hey, you know what I think? I think that we should all go ice skating. Hey, you know what I think High Road to China's Bess Armstrong? I think, well, really nothing. Just wanted to point out that she was in High Road to China, which is definitely a sin. Oh, there's this movie on tonight? I really want to watch. It's about this girl, and she does obscene phone calls. It's like her job. Girl 6 for a good time call? Phone sex 1997? Phone sex 2017? Anne Hathaway and Valentine's Day? You're breaking like 14 different laws. Name one. No, seriously. What a stupid thing to say here. I get Brian's trying to give her a hard time, but there are like 14 different lines that could have conveyed the same thing in a way that at least coincided with a fragment of reality. If they're really young, is it like kidnapping or something? Parental conflict, hanging with the wrong crowd, peer pressure, underage drinking and smoking, and now possible statutory rape can be added to the list of topics this show crams into its very first episode. No wonder this thing only lasted 19 episodes. They ran out of shit to talk about. Hey, I know that girl. Just a reminder, Claire Danes was 14 when she shot this show, and Paul Allen here was 21. Can you imagine if this show had actual makeout scenes with the two of them? Good thing that'll never happen. At Ryan's house. <laughs> No one was home. So why is the cop leaving her there unattended? At the very least, shouldn't he suggest that Angela stay there with her? Creepily reading a book up at a tree by flashlight? Seriously, Brian Krakow might be the most insane teenage male character ever created for television. And that's with David Silver, Dawson Leary, and Xander Harris on the table. She was hiding, but in this other way she wasn't. Claire Danes really is great in this, and she plays this role so authentically that it works even amongst the clunky dialogue and soap opera melodrama around her. I just can't finish my so-called sins without taking at least one off for her magic. And of course her dad is having an affair as well, because they haven't already lathered up enough soap in this opera. It's the year 2000, that's the theme, just what it'll be like. Well, to save you the effort, the video chain Blockbuster will turn down the offer to buy the company called Netflix for 50 million. The crazy naked guy will win Survivor, and the athletes at the Sydney Olympics will go through the first 70,000 condoms so fast that they have to order another 20,000 before the Olympics are over. So, hope that helps with the yearbook and all. It's a so-called wonderful life. Things are about to change around here. Recess is over. No, we're not the kind of twins who look alike. We just finished each other's sandwiches. That's what I was gonna say. The game is in the afternoon. I have to get my hair done at five, and the dance is at eight. I'll be totally wiped out. My mother had not had a hot meal for herself in 15 years. I cannot bring myself to eat a well-balanced meal in front of my mother. It just means too much to her. You wanna scream at your mother and then laugh at her tears! It doesn't seem like a Friday. It's Thursday. Oh. I need a machine gun. Jordan, this bites. Let's go over to Grungus, come on. This place is dead anyway, man. 
you got everybody there. You got your freshmen, ROTC guys, preps, JV jocks. So you just dropped your oldest friend for no reason? I, I mean, just tell me what I did. A lot of pain, a little love. Am I supposed to feel grateful? Burgundy and the ladies went out for a little stroll, huh? Looking good, Mr. Cartoon. <laughs> <laughs>